If you've ever fantasised of pulling up stumps and ticking off all those dreams on your bucket list, you'll be inspired by our next guest. That's right. Aussie daredevil Sebastian Terry travels the world accomplishing things most of us can only dream of. Now, he's gone skydiving naked, <laughs> set a world record and even lived on a desert island. And he's here with us in the studio without his shoes. Good morning, Terry. <laughs> morning. How What's the story about without the shoes apart from... I don't know. I don't, I, I don't really wear shoes that often. That's very cool. I'm, I feel embarrassed now you made a point of it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we're jealous. Oh, we will feel free. Well, he wanted to come on breakfast TV naked, but that's all we could allow this morning. <laughs> what an amazing thing to do. What made you do it? Um, a, a few things. I, I finished school. I didn't know what to do. I was told to get a degree, so I did, and I came out at the end of that feeling a little unfulfilled. And uh, along the way, I, I lost a friend of mine, and uh, I, I guess it was just a moment where I, for the first time, looked at my life, and, uh, and I, I wondered whether he was happy. Um, you know, if he could relive his years again, would he do the same thing? Mm. And I think he probably would have. And then I looked at myself and I thought, oh, geez, I think I'd change everything. So I mm. picked up a pen and paper and just jotted down all these things that I thought might make me smile. And that was it. Because wow. most people start compiling a bucket list at around about maybe 55, 60, around retirement age. Yeah. <laughs> but you've gone in... <laughs> Can I just say, by the way, it was, oh, yeah. it was, it was zero degrees. Yes, I'm that sure. Yeah, it was very I'm unflattering. Sure, <laughs> I'm sure. Oi. There's yeah. one thing to skydive, but there'd, there'd be a different sensation doing it naked I'm imagining yeah yeah well, it, wasn't, it wasn't comfortable no. um, <laughs> the hardest thing about it was not finding a place that would allow me to do it naked but finding an instructor who's happy having me <laughs> naked tied to him sure yes yeah. I'm that sure you had plenty of offers no, no, now I that I think about it <laughs> how did you zero in um, on those things that you really wanted to do I mean it, because it, for many different people it's many different things but for you how did you zero in well, it's relative for sure I think it's yeah. different for everyone but uh, I just gave myself a moment of, I guess permission just to consider what my version of happiness was and uh, yeah I, I mean purely it was my rationale for the list was just things that would make me happy so it could have been anything and my list is probably a bit eclectic and bizarre compared to most but it's not to say people should be doing that you know buying a house or having a baby is, is just as important for mm. others so yeah, well, yeah you, you did the having a baby thing but it was kind of different you actually delivered a baby yeah I did I did deliver a baby in a town called Regina in Canada. Of course. Um, yeah, so I, I did. And the baby turned five the other day, Oakley. So I'm, I've become very good friends with the family and uh, they're not watching, but if they were, I'd say hello. Because they're in Canada. Oh, fair enough. That's the only <laughs> and reason. And you also um, got, you married a stranger in Vegas. I did, yes, I where, did. Where is that person now? Um, I think they're in Vegas still. Yeah, it it, uh, it didn't, awesome. didn't work out, Lisa, unfortunately. Oh. Um, but, How long uh, had you known her? I actually got, I met a, I met a stripper mud wrestling. I proposed to her. I found this chapel, the Say I Do Wedding drive through 30 strangers turned up to yeah. watch me. She didn't turn up, so I ended up having to look at the crowd and asking, is there anyone else here who'd consider marrying me? So the receptionist of my hostel said yes, so I ended up marrying her. And I can't we had believe a... it didn't last. It, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It's one so, of those things. Well, yeah. Brit you know, Brittany got married. And at last name. That's sort of. true. Are you also past Sharon Osbourne? Yeah, I wanted to kiss a celebrity yeah. and uh, it happened to be Sharon Osbourne, which is yeah. an event I was speaking at. And yeah. uh, I just asked her at the Q&A session. I was, I was petrified and she yeah. said, yeah, get your ass on stage. Literally, that's what she said. Well, you're past that. Like, if it's a problem. She, uh, I haven't oh. told many people this. She stuck Hello. her tongue down my throat yeah. and bit my lip. It bled. My lip was bleeding at that point. I was in pain. She's a wild woman. Yeah. She certainly is. I mean, this started out as something that you wanted to do for you, but now you've flipped it and you're doing things for others. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, very naturally, it, it, it started to resonate with people around the world. And uh, I guess now it's my, my website's turned into an online community where people share their goals and now collaborate. And, and I'm very lucky and fortunate in that a lot of people ask me for help. So I spend a lot of my time helping others, more so than doing my own list now. It started when I, I met a guy called um, Mark. He saw me on, doing an interview, actually, and he, he contacted me. He was a quadriplegic, and he asked, he said, I've created a list, would you help shave my head? So I did. I shaved his head, and he, he was completely able-bodied to the age of 30, got bitten by a tick, got Lyme's disease, and now he's a quadriplegic. And I said, yeah. you know, is there anything else I can help you with? And he said, I've always wanted to do a half marathon. And I said, well, how can I help you do that? And he said, you could push me. So I ended up pushing Mark, and he was the very first person that I ever helped. I think I've got this philosophy that you have to look after yourself to be able to look after other people. And he was the first time I ever looked after anyone else, and since then I've done nothing but help people. So now my journey is full of people contacting me for help and people contacting me wanting to help people. So I manually put these, oh, wow. put these stories together. So... Uh, I mean, I don't know where to stop. I could talk for hours about this, but I've just been approached to develop an app in New York, so I might have to move to New York to basically create this thing. It's been in my head for a long time. And then I've also... I, 
I don't know if I can. I want to say hello and thank you to everyone who's ever followed me because, um, you know, it's, it's been this journey. It's completely unplanned. There's a lot of people watching and I put on my social media yesterday that I had an announcement and that is that uh, I've just been approached to do a reality TV show in the US of me just helping people. So I'm going into the city after this to sign a contract to travel for eight weeks just helping people wow, non-stop. Wow, that's so cool, bro. I'm over the moon. Life's well great. Done. I love it. It's good, good stuff. Good man, good man. Lovely uh, to meet you. Look forward to seeing what you do next. It's going to yeah, be fun. Yeah, thanks. Oh, can I also say hello to my mum? <laughs> Very quickly. My mum, hello. Uh, you know who you are. Um, <laughs> I, I presume I love you and uh, and I just raised $100,000 for Alzheimer's Australia oh. because she's got the younger onset of dementia. And, uh, oh, right. So, yeah, love you very much and um, good morning. You're doing amazing <laughs> things, Sebastian. She'd be very proud of her son. Well yeah. done, brother. Thanks well a done. lot it's for great that. Great to see. Well, for more on Sebastian's <laughs> epic adventures, head to our website, and we'll steer you into his. He's uh, he's doing great things. Certainly is.